My name is Kirsten Ferdinands. For those of you who haven't met me before or haven't seen my face on websites and around about primary schools, and it's my privilege to be the executive principal at Brisbane South State Secondary College and to welcome you all here this evening for what is officially our first information evening in our new lectorial. So an amazing space. Um, as I'm sure that you're all, uh, all, all seeing and as you see the information that's shared tonight, a great space for us to be able to do that. And in doing that also too, I want to acknowledge the Turrbal people, the traditional owners on the land in which we gather and pay my respects to their leaders past, present and emerging. So a little bit of information about our college. So certainly myself as the executive principal, but about our vision for our school, and it is around that we are the new standard in education. And we talk about that new is never new for long, unless we're willing to work at it. And it does say it in the city south, we haven't changed that to Brisbane city, uh, sorry, Brisbane south, we'll need to change that. We make that commitment now, um, and also in long term and into the future. We will always set the new standard in education. And how we do that, it's about challenging conventions. And for our students who are here with us in 2021, they're experiencing that now, the way in which we put the student at the center of everything that we do. Our students learn about who they are, who they are as learners around their self-understanding. They learn about how they connect with the world. And over the course of education will be how they contri can contribute back um, and make a change around their desired future and a change for society in general. So about challenging conventions and if you've got a chance to come on a tour this morning or one of the other tours coming up, you'll see the way in which we are actually creating educational spaces, creating learning, creating an inquiry-based approach to that also celebrates our challenging conventions. We're certainly collaborating with the best, and this program, our Biomedical Science Academy, is one way in which we are doing that. Our partnership with the University of Queensland in this particular academy program is second to none. It is unique in the state of Queensland, and it is also um, reaching new benchmarks internationally as well and Australian-wide. So thinking globally and acting locally, as I mentioned, our students learn about who they are and how they connect with the world, but particularly about who they are and how they connect with our people here at this school in our local community and, and wider and abroad. And, and as our students embark on their academy studies, it's how they then will connect globally in that space as well. Our personality, so who are we at Brisbane South? So we're certainly about big picture thinking, we collaborate with our neighbours to lead new era in education in Australia and inspire positive change for a sustainable world. We are big on student wellbeing. Our student-led approach lets every mind free, equipping them to overcome life challenges and creating opportunities to nurture their inner greatness. We're channeling progress. We acknowledge and respect every student's inherent differences and we provide the unique learning ex experiences and opportunities to ensure that every student is prepared for their chosen future. And we know that global starts local, as I spoke. So we're located at the heart of the knowledge corridor here at our college, and we are part of a proud community who have a shared responsibility for the growth and success of our students. So our promise to all of our students, and in particular also our Biomedical Science Academy students, is that we are genuine. We believe that education is more powerful when it's real. Every interaction is an opportunity to connect and change lives. And as you hear from my wonderful staff this evening as we start to go through the presentation, you'll see how we make this academy as real and as authentic as possible as well. We're pioneering with our sights firmly set on the future. We're setting a new course for education with courage and creativity. We're welcoming, we, create, we are a diverse community of, um, that celebrates individuality and welcomes every student with open arms. We're optimistic, we're focused on the positive future, readying our students to lead the change they want to see in the world. And we're certainly contemporary and that comes back to the new standard in education. Our journey is just beginning, but we will always be a learning community for the now. So it's my privilege this evening to introduce my amazing team who are also going to take us through information in particular around the Biomedical Science Academy this evening. 
And I'm going to introduce, firstly, Kristen Lynch, who will do deliver the next part, but also who you'll get to meet this evening, Tamara Sullivan, my other deputy principal, Chris Powell, my hot of mathematics, Dr. Jennifer Bannum, our science head of department, and Stefan Jegero, who is our head of department for technologies. So I now invite uh, Kristen Lynch, the de deputy principal, to take us through the next part of the program. Thank you. Oh, and I'm just going to dim the lights so that you can see some of our presentation a little bit better. We've got quite a few images um, here to show you today. So I'm going to be really talking about uh, a little bit more about who we're working with to create this Biomedical Science Academy program. So as Kirsten mentioned, we are in collaboration with UQ and we do work with them closely to co-design um, and co-deliver our Biomedical Science Academy. So we're providing bespoke pathways in the STEM um, with the medical science lens to open new academic pathways and learning opportunities for our students. So we're really trying to nurture um, the curiosity and interest um, within our students in that STEM field, but also to develop their skills and confidence to try and make them the next generation to inspire positive change, which is very exciting. So we've been working with a number of faculties um, at UQ, so the Faculty of Medicine, the Faculty of Science, and the Faculty of Engineering. And within those faculties, then, we work more closely with um, schools or institutes. And I'm going to um, talk a little bit about our main partners um, through this process. So we have been working very closely with the School of Biomedical Sciences, which, sit, which sits within the Faculty of Medicine. So Associate Professor Stephen Anderson, he's the Chair of Teaching and Learning within that school, um, and his staff member, Dr Louise Ainsco. So they lead their teaching and learning team to work with our staff to co-design um, appropriate and exciting um, activities for our students. So within the, the School of Biomedical Sciences, it's a multidisciplinary teaching and research, research school. So um, they actually teach um, across, I'm going to go through the disciplines in a minute and you'll see how diverse they are, but they teach across um, a number of faculties and degrees. So they teach medicine students, pharmacy students, science students, engineering students, human movement students, um, psychology students. So um, whilst they in, are in the School of uh, Biomedical Sciences, they're not just teaching within that biomedical science field, they're teaching across, which is... Um, great for our students to, to have that diversity. So within the biomedical sciences, they have seven teaching disciplines and then some research themes as well. Um, so I'm going to go through them a little bit and for the adults in the room, um, you will probably recognise some of these disciplines, um, but for students, some of these may be new, so I'm going to briefly explain what they are as well. So we have anatomy, physiology, and cell biology, uh, some of their disciplines. So anatomy, anatomy is about studying the structure of the body. Um, physiology is about um, the function. And then cell biology is looking at all the different cells and their components um, and their function. So pharmacology then is about medicines and how they function um, and creating new medicines. We've got pathology, which is about testing, more testing in a lab um, to look at diagnoses or for forensic purposes. And then we have developmental biology, which is about how animals and plants grow and reproduce. We also have neuroscience, um, which is about the structure of the brain and the nervous system. So students will experience learning, um, have learning experiences across these disciplines. Um, and you'll see right at the end, we'll show you a little video about um, from our students visiting um, the School of Biomedical Sciences early this year. And they're already starting to look at anatomy, physiology um, type experiences. So you'll see some hands on things that they have done and they'll talk about some experiments um, where they have um, experienced that and learning about. So then they have nine research themes. Um, so cell architecture, they look at chronic diseases, drug design and development, um, anatomy, innovation in biomedical education, musculoskeletal and motor control, neurobiology and brain function, looking more at the nervous system, receptors and sig signaling, reproduction. So um, you might start thinking, well, what are these sorts of things that um, my year seven students and beyond 
are going to start exploring in high school, which is a very different experience to our typical science experience at school. So our other um, partner um, that we've been working really closely with is Spark Ed, um, which also sits within the Faculty of Medicine. So Spark Ed stands for Students Performing Advanced Research Queensland, and it's located it's um, within the Queensland Diamantina Institute, and it's located in the Tr Translational Research Institute or the TRI, um, which is the beautiful orange building behind us. If you're familiar with that, um, located near the the um, PA Hospital. So SparkEd is actually um, a partnership between the Department of Education and um, UQ, and um, it's a, a lab that is appropriate for students um, of the school age to use within that facility and work with those research going on um, within the TRI. Um, so the TRI, if you, you're not familiar with it, it's an Australian first initiative of bench to bedside medical research. Um, so they are located there near the PA hospital so that they can um, use and apply their research um, in the field or in the community straight away. So within that, within that team, um, we have Charmaine Keel, who's the head of department, and Jessica Malcolm, who's a teacher, and they have um, biomedical science um, backgrounds as well, um, but they are seconded from the department to run that program within there. And behind our picture there, um, you can see the lab that the students um, are going to experience there. So the students are really going to um, focus on, through this program, um, really gaining enrichment experiences and being extended um, within the STEM curriculum. Um, and with that focus on STEM with the double M, um, with that medical science lens. So they will start to learn about what it means to be a STEM professional. Uh, they will start developing um, or continue to develop their critical and creative thinking and particularly their problem solving skills or design thinking processes through different um, uh, activities and you'll see Tamara will um, give a really great practical example later in, in the um, evening um, where you'll see the kinds of things that they'll do. They'll develop their scientific method, knowledge and skills far beyond what they will normally do in the labs at a high school. Um, they'll develop those safe lab skills. They'll begin to work more collaboratively and um, develop their communication. So I'm going to pass on to our head of department team, starting with Dr. Bannon, um, to explain more about what that looks like through the phases of high school. Good evening. In junior secondary, our biomedical science academy students explore what it means to be a STEM professional. They explore the diverse disciplines of biomedical science in order to gain an understanding of um, the breadth and depth of our current knowledge, uh, but also the opportunities available to them. They look at how technology has enabled and continues to enable discoveries and advancements in our society. Finally, they explore the fundamental role of mathematics by not only using mathematics in their experiences, but proactively developing a strong foundation in mathematical problem solving skills. Specifically, over years seven and eight, students participate in a range of enrichment opportunities, both here on our campus and at our partner institutions. These include UQ Experience Days with the School of Biomedical Science in the Faculty of Medicine. Here, students will have the opportunity to directly connect with researchers who will share their journey as a biomedical scientist and model how they apply inquiry skills um, to answer scientific questions and solve problems. They will also gain hands-on experience in anatomy and physiology laboratories and have the opportunity to explore the UQ campus. Students will also visit SparkEd. They will gain first-hand experience in specialist biomedical research techniques in world-class facilities. They will develop their knowledge and skills of more complex procedures like PCRs and gel electrophoresis, which are essential in genetic modification, leading to their understanding of immunology techniques like ELISAs and flow cytometry. 
The Spark Ed workshops provide our students with an incredible opportunity. As we have partnered with the team at Spark Ed, we've been able to curate a really bespoke program for our students as they progress through year seven to 12. In fact, no other school has this opportunity. The limited number of schools that do engage with Spark Ed can only do so with students in year 10 and above. Through our partnership, we've been able to develop this program for our students to start from year seven. Actually, next week, our current cohort of year seven students will have their first workshop where they will be culturing and classifying bacteria, really understanding just how important these organisms are as tools and vehicles for biomedical research. And later in the year, they will actually extract DNA from mammalian cells and analyze it using gel electrophoresis. Students will also engage in flipped learning experiences throughout the year to really build and connect their mathematical knowledge and skills to their biomedical science experiences. They will also meet regularly at our mathematics sessions where they will collaboratively develop their problem solving skills. They will also have the opportunity to participate in competitions, including the Australasian Problem Solving Mathematics Olympiad and ICAS competitions in mathematics, science and digital technologies. Finally, students will also develop their understanding of the importance of technology to biomedical research. They will gain an understanding of the current technology used, including pipettes and microscopes, um, and how this has developed over time, as well as new and innovative technology. For example, students will use 3D printing to produce biomedical research models and virtual reality to learn how to work safely in the lab before we enter those settings. They will also use VR to practice and refine their specialist techniques like pipetting. In year eight, our students will continue to refine their knowledge and skills. They will engage in visiting scientist days where mini lectures and learning experiences will be held on our campus, um, delivered by our UQ partners. They will also gain experience in more advanced specialist biomedical research techniques. It's now my pleasure to hand over to Head of Department of Technologies, Mr. Stefan Jegaru. Thank you, Dr. Bannon. What a wonderful opportunity this is for our year sevens and eights at uh, Brisbane South. It's really something special. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So in year nine, our program begins with the, uh, sorry, begins with this uh, specific biomedical science elective subject, co-design curriculum with the School of Biomedical Sciences. Uh, then the year nine continuation of the Spark Ed workshops, building on the knowledge that they acquire in year seven and eight. And then to enhance all these experiences, we have cutting edge technology here at Brisbane South, we, where we can enrich the student experiences and pursuits in those elective sele uh, selections and academic programs. In year 10, in the Sparkhead Research Immersion Program, students will pair with one of TRI's world ranked research groups to help problem solve and prototype solutions contributing to scientific discoveries. In this, they'll have authentic real world problems, apply their skills from year seven and uh, seven to nine workshops, and students will work as in-house scientists and present their findings to the research group at the end of the week. Students can attend scientific medical seminars within TRI. They'll develop online research and scientific, oh, sorry, science communication skills and opportunities for acknowledgement in published research. Experiences with startup STEM companies that exist in TRI that develop bench to bedside solutions. This continues on with their program in year 11 uh, with the Sparkhead Immersion and with UQ. Further access to learning opportunities within UQ, specialist research laboratories, the Integrated Pathology Learning Centre. They have ongoing mentoring from UQ researchers, academics and PhD students while assisting with real world research. Year, 11, year 11s will have a week long Spark Ed research immersion and that builds on the experiences that they have from year 10. Now I have the pleasure to announce Mr. Chris Powell, who is the head of mathematics. Good evening, everyone. I'm just gonna spend a few moments this evening discussing what uh, a senior pathway might look like for a student who's coming into uh, year seven, uh, going into the Biomedical Science Academy. There's actually two pathways. There is the, the Australian Tertiary Admissions Rank, 
which is commonly known as the ATAR, and you might have heard of this one as overtaking the OP program, which was around for about 25 years. So the ATAR is a standard measure of all students, uh, to, of a student's overall academic achievement in relation to that of other students. It's calculated on their best five subjects, and in the ATAR, the students must pass English to be eligible. So an example, um, subject selection for a student who has come through the Biomedical Science Academy could be English, Mathematical Methods, special, Specialist Mathematics, Biology, Chemistry, and Digital Technologies. Within the ATAR, there is an opportunity for an accelerated pathway. With the UQ Enhanced Studies Program, extended knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, for the students by completing one university subject during year 12. There's approximately 40 subjects offered and the students may receive credit for their completed course. Some example courses range from advanced calculus and linear algebra to introduction to software engineering. And it's important to note that Ms Ferdinand's is on the advisory group with UQ with courses constantly under review as to what the senior students will be offered at university. The second pathway students um, could do in the academic senior years is the International Baccalaureate, or commonly called the IB. The senior years diploma program focus on preparing, focuses on preparing students for success in higher education and to be active participants in a global society. The IB program consists of three core components. So the theory of knowledge uh, is an oral presentation and an essay where students reflect on the nature of knowledge and how we claim to know. The second core component is the CAS, so creativity, activity, and service. And this is the extracurricular component that could range from a sporting expertise all the way through to something like the Duke of Edinburgh. And the extended essay, which is in it an independent piece of research. This culminates with a 4,000 word paper at the end. Practical preparation uh, for undergraduate research is what the extended essay is all about. And one option is that students use their year 10 Spark Ed immersion activity uh, and project as their research question for their International Baccalaureate Extended Essay. As well as the three core components, students pick, uh, from one, pick one subject from six different subject offerings. So the first group is uh, English, studies in language and literature. The second group is language acquisition. Um, here at Brisbane South, we are currently offering Chinese and Spanish. The third group is individuals and societies, which is sort of your humanities-based subjects. Group four is the sciences, group five is mathematics, and group six is the arts. The arts is actually optional. If students choose not to do an arts, they can pick another subject from groups three, four, or five. And it's important to note that out of these six subjects, students can either study a standard level or a higher level um, of each of their subjects. But it's important also to note that a maximum of three higher level subjects and three standard level subjects can be achieved. So you can't do more than three high levels. So it's, in, it's, it's an important and exciting acceleration pathway as well that for students who do a higher level international baccalaureate subject, this is actually considered to be a first year university subject level. So an example, if a student was to do a UQ biomedical science degree, within the IB program, if they did higher level biology, that would be the equivalent of biology 1020 at UQ. If they did chemistry, it would be the equivalent of a first year chemistry subject, etc. So students can receive up to one semester of credit towards their degree whilst they're still in their senior years, should they do the IB. And universities often award credit or exemptions for subjects within a university degree level if a student has done higher level IB subjects at high school. And most importantly, the IB is recognised internationally, and we're very fortunate to offer it here at Brisbane South State Secondary College. I'm now going to hand over to our Deputy Principal, Tamara Sullivan, who will go through an example pathway for a student, what it might look like from Year 7 to 12. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I know that you have been presented with a lot of information here tonight. So I thought that it would be a good way to finish this presentation by providing you with a possible pathway of what it might look like for a Biomed Academy student here at Brisbane South. So for our students, it might be that in their junior years that they are challenged to design and code a working prosthetic hand. So this is the challenge that might be presented to our younger students. 
So they might actually begin their journey by first of all visiting UQ and the TRI and having a look at their specialised facilities, also having a look at the type of equipment that they're using in their research. Our students then might have the opportunity to hear from an academic on their current research. So as an example, that our students might get to hear from a researcher in bioinformatics, such as how um, human cells can regenerate rather than decline with age and disease. From there, our students then might come back to our college and use our dedicated virtual reality um, labs in our centre to explore anatomy and how to perform dissections in a simulated environment. And you can see there up on the screen, there is an example of um, being able to dissect a toad in VR. Our students then might have the opportunity of attending UQ's Faculty of Science and School of Mathematics and Physics for a two-day bioinformatics immersion activity, where then they actually get to apply those skills that they've learnt in that simulated environment and actually get to dissect their own toad and then test their electrical current capacity across its sciatic nerve. And then using their mathematical skills, they undertake a statistical analysis on the data that they've been able to collect. They then might have the opportunity of coming back to the college and using a number of our flexible learning spaces to apply their knowledge to collaboratively design and prototype their prosthetic finger and hand. And also then using what they have learnt in their immersion um, activities, looking at the neural delay and being able to code that to get it working. Our students also might access um, our designated makerspace in our research and innovation centre. And there we have some of the latest technologies such as um, 3D modelling software, 3D printers and soon to be a laser cutter. And then learning how to code and actually get their prosthetic limb actually working. And then finally, they might have the opportunity to be able to present their idea to our UQ visiting academics for feedback so that they're able to refine their product. At the same time, our students might, have, um, might be able to go over to the TRI. And it's here where they're really developing those practical laboratory skills and being able to access um, the types of um, equipment that normally wouldn't be possible in a school. And then also in year nine, our students are having the opportunity to really be able to co-design that STEM subject, um, not only with our staff, but also in collaboration with the University of Queensland. In year 10, our students then might have the opportunity to continue to work with a researcher in the bioinformatics um, area where they're, they're currently working on a real world problem. And it's very fortunate that our students have this opportunity to work with a researcher on a current problem that doesn't have a defined problem, um, sorry, it doesn't have a um, defined solution. And then really being able to contribute to that research. Then in years 11 and 12, our students might decide to go down the IB pathway. And it's here that they might choose subjects such as biology uh, and sports, exercise and health science at the higher uh, level. And students will continue then working with their researcher in that immersion program that then can contribute towards their extended essay. Students then, having undertaken those type of subjects, would have completed two already university subjects in their biomedical science degree. And this means then that they have the opportunity to be able to accelerate their degree or choose additional electives um, in their chosen field. So you can see that there is a very exciting pathway that awaits our Biomedical Science Academy students here at Brisbane South. So how do you go about applying? And so up on the screen there, I have some key dates for you. 
So the most important aspect to note is that in order to apply for the academy, parents must complete an enrolment application. And this is whether you're in catchment or you are an out of catchment enrolment. And once you've completed this, you then need to complete a Biomedical Science Academy application. And the details are on our website. And in this process, students are required to um, answer some questions. The difference there with the cost of the um, fee to apply for the Biomedical Science Academy is that it, our in-catchment students are already coming here so they don't need to pay the administration fee. And our applications will open on the 4th of May and will also close and that fee payment needs to be received by the 28th of May. Once our students have put in an application. We will then send out details um, about the ACR Higher Ability Selection Test, and this will take place on Saturday the 19th of June, and further information will be provided to you regarding the times. If successful, students will then receive a letter of offer um, on Friday the 23rd of July. And once receiving that letter, the family then must confirm acceptance via email and also pay the $200 confirmation fee. Now, this is just an indicative cost um, of the program fee being approximately $300. And this covers things such in, in the Biomedical Science Academy, such as buses, um, external competitions, workshop and resources. But that $200 confirmation um, fee will be credited against the program fee. So hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, that gives you a bit of a snapshot of what a pathway is going to look like and a very exciting pathway for students in the Brisbane South Biomedical Science Academy. I'm now going to hand back to Kirsten Ferdinands to finish. So just a little bit of information in regards to the final decision around selective entry. So as it says, and what is on our website now in enrolment management plan, that students will be considered um, for the selective entry program in accordance with our process and will be managed and determined finally by myself as the principal and I am the person who's responsible for all decisions. So we do take into consideration the application form and also the selective entry um, academic testing. So those dates are, are very clearly set. We need to adhere to those dates but the information that you receive from me will be that you will get a letter of acceptance or you will also, if not, um, we will also give the feedback as to why not. Um, you'll see the QR code there. You have in front of you when you walked in a two-pager of frequently asked questions and a lot of that's based on a lot of our families from last year and the questions that they asked. We've tried to capture as much of those and put them on a two-pager for you tonight. But if you have additional questions that you don't believe were answered or queries, you can just scan that QR code with your phones, very much like you're doing when you're going into every single venue um, at the moment. It'll bring up a, a forms document. You'll be able to submit those um, questions through to us.